third person I want to thank today is God. And he, he held the weather off there for a little while. But you know what? He has a plan and a purpose. There's a reason it's raining right now, okay? So, uh, but I'm sure we'll get uh, underway uh, here shortly. But I also want to thank um, Phil Parnell and, and his staff, the Sumter County Recreation Department, for getting the fields ready and for all they do for this tournament. I also want to thank uh, Larry McElroy uh, for, for all he, we, I don't know if I can do this without him. He does all the scheduling and, and, and he really he puts a lot of hours in this. And, and, and uh, I'd like to thank Rob uh, also for what all he does with the t-shirts and everything. So um, just a, a special appreciation to all, to, to all that. And then all of you that come and play and all the coaches uh, and parents that, that come, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, Brandy couldn't be here. She's had to go to the Citadel. Uh, Mark, her oldest boy, had a uh, he's playing baseball for the Citadel and had an inter-squad uh, scrimmage today. And they were actually going to try to get back and make a memorial over at Palmetto Park. So uh, anyway, but on behalf of her family, they want to thank all for, for coming out as well. Uh, just real quick, I almost forgot to do this at the other ballpark, but uh, a lot of you uh, don't know Ashley. But you're here playing to honor her. Okay, and it's like, you know, who is this girl that, that we come and we play uh, ball to honor? She was a little girl, 11 years old, back in 2009. She played her last game over on Palmetto Park on field one. And just a few short days later, God took her to be home with him. She had no idea when she walked off that field that that would be her last game. Ashley was the type of ball player that any coach would want to coach. She had a great attitude. She, she gave 110%. She left it all on the field. And, you know, I like to challenge each one of you. You know, every time you take the field, you don't know when it's going to be your last game. How do you want to be remembered? Okay? Apparently, Ashley did the right thing. We've got 83 ball teams here playing. It's a record number of teams playing uh, in this tournament this year, okay? And probably 75, 80% of the teams don't even know who she, never got to meet her, don't even know who she was. So that's leaving a legacy, y'all, okay? So always keep that in mind. Every time you take the field, how do I want to be remembered? The T-shirts you see, um, her, her name on the shirt, that was her number, number 15. Her name on the shirt is actually a signature on one of her papers from school that her mom got. We actually scanned. The handprint that you see on them is actually the handprint that the day she died, the hospital took her handprints and gave it to uh, Brandy. We scanned those as well. So when you, you, know, when you get one of those shirts with, with the handprint and the name, you're, you're taking a piece of ash at home with you. So anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you to death. I'm gonna keep talking. Um, we are honored, very honored today to have a very special guest who's become a very good friend of, of mine that we don't get to see each other a whole lot at all. But we are very honored to have a three-time Olympic gold medalist in softball, Leah Miko. Her for coming, and she's got something she wants to share with you, and, and she's going to touch your heart with it, okay? So, Leah. All right, well, I'm honored to be here with all of you, and also very thankful for Jeffrey Bays as well as everyone he talked about that truly makes this event happen. I think it's awesome. We play a lot of softball. I know I grew up playing all the time from Southern California. How you girls are playing all the time, but this, this weekend you're playing in honor of somebody. And I think that's uh, the difference that a lot, compared to a lot of other tournaments that you can play in, just that reminder of really that tomorrow is not guaranteed to any of us. And that what we do today does matter and does make a difference. So let's go ahead and uh, let's pray real quick and then I'm going to share a few things, all right? 
Father God, I just come before you. Lord, I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill this place. I ask for your presence to be felt among all of us, Lord God. I thank you for your truth, your word, Lord God, that is life-giving. I pray for every single person here to literally just hear you knock on the door, doors of their hearts or encouraging those that are your children already, Lord God, to just continue to live for you, for your glory, Lord God, that um, tomorrow isn't guaranteed and one day we all, all will stand before you. We pray that we'd be welcomed in, Lord God, because of what Jesus has done. So we just give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, girls, I know that I'm in South Carolina. I live in California. And it's not always so popular to just go talk about God. Um, I, I'm thankful for parts of this country that still have just that excitement and the freedom. I think sometimes um, we can kind of go through the routine and, and go through the motions. Um, you know, I think that if we were to compare, uh, you know, the, the time we put in with God and our relationship for Him and, and getting close to Him and starting to learn the Bible and uh, memorize verses. I know a, a number of people in this area, just from talking with Jeffrey and some other people, a number of people go uh, to Christian schools, so they're getting that at school as well. But I think the biggest thing I want to encourage all of you is that, that it would never just become routine, that it would never just become going through the motions. Because how many of you um, think softball would be fun if, if we just kind of go through the motions? You know, I, I think these coaches, they put a lot of time and effort into, into working with you girls. But you know, I did a little bit of coaching, and I'll tell you, if, my, if I'm out there working hard and my girls are just like, oh, well, just another ball, oh, well, I don't really care, then all of a sudden that changes everything. That changes the results of what you're doing on the field, that changes um, the atmosphere and the people around you that changes uh, the excitement that happens from it. And so I just want to encourage you that first of all, God has a team. That we are on his, his team if we are his children and if we are the body of Christ. And girls, I'm very passionate about sharing about that because you know as a little girl like I believe in Jesus and when I was your age I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. But if you would have started talking to me about my faith and if you would have questioned me like, Tell me about your faith and tell me about who is Jesus and, and you know, what is he doing in your life and, you know, what verses are really sending out to you and, you know, do you study? And, and I would have been like, no, I don't know, I'm just a Christian, you know? And I encourage you to start to say, God, work in my life. Show me what you have for me. Because our God is so big. I learned eventually that if I just wouldn't have made up my own kind of views and beliefs, because here's what happens. How many of you are in high school? Is everybody in high school? Yeah. Okay. How many of you are like in middle school or junior high? Okay, so this is kind of the age. But here's what happens. There's a lot of different voices out there. You see, there's the truth, the word of God that we stand upon, the Bible that God tells us, this is how to do my will. These are the things that are the fruit of my spirit. If you, if you're my father, if you're my child, you're going to be, you're going to be filled with the spirit. Therefore, you will Goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. I had no idea about all that. Because I did try to be a good person. And I did believe in God and I heard Jesus die on the cross. But here's what I want to encourage you today. Jesus did not die for us to just be like, yep, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm good. Good with you, God. He died so that we could transform the world once he transformed our lives. He died so that we can say, God, I don't really bring anything to the table. But you know what? If you work through me, I can do whatever you desire for me to do in my life. He didn't die so we could say, which I think for a long time this was kind of my plan, is, okay, this is my plan, and here's what I want to do, and I love softball, and I want to get good grades in school, and I want it. And for a long time it was like, God, let's go. And eventually when I got to college, I realized that God is saying, there's a verse in the Bible, in Psalm, that says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And I want to tell you, girls, if I look back, I think for a long time, I lived in a way that really focused on the me part. I didn't even know, you know, at one point that, even early on, it was, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And girls, eventually, I had to get to. The focus is on the Lord, and he will fulfill it. But what will he fulfill? His will. 
Girls, I love the Bible because it, said it talks about people of all ages. It talks about young people and old people. It talks about, he just, he just says, who's in? And on your team, you either have either been chosen because of a child, or some coach said, hey, we want you on our team anyways, come play for us. Right now, I want you to be on our team. And God says, hey, I have open tryouts. Everyone is invited. I have a spot for everyone. But you know what ends up happening? One, people think, no, God, you're good to be, you're good. I, I, I'm going to plan my own team my way. But, you know, I believe you're there. That doesn't get us into heaven. And then I think there's also a big group of people that, okay, we're like, okay, I want to be on the team. I definitely want eternal life. Uh, Jesus, I believe what you did on the cross for me. You know, I, I, I know that I can't get myself into heaven because I'm a sinner. But I do accept it. And then they're happy. They're happy just sitting over on the bench. They, they, that's it. They don't. You know what? I have too many people that are on the bench. I'm looking for those that are going to say, okay, God, where have you put me? You see, I grew up and I was a pitcher and a first baseman. And then when I got to college in Arizona, my coach was like, my second year, hey, we're going to put you in the outfield. We need you out there this year. That's where we need you. And girls, I could have said, no, I'm a pitcher. I don't play outfield. I'm just having the ball every single pitch. And I said, I said, okay, what do I got to do? How do I become the best outfield? You know, I feel like an eight-year-old the way you're doing this drill, but I'm going to do it right 100% of the time. And girls, two years later, I'm making the Olympic team as an outfielder. Our approach and our response, I think approachability, that's the stuff that got me on the Olympic team. Not talent alone, that doesn't make champions. But it's being moldable. Any coach in here will tell you, I want that kid. They might not have all the best ability, but they have a heart that says, Coach, I'll run through a wall for you. with God. Because if I encourage every one of you guys, I want to ask you, God wants you to know he has a spot. How many of you can say? And this is not to condemn, because if the Bible says there's no condemnation in Jesus Christ, for anything we do that's bad, he says, I forgive you, but come and do it my way. Let me help you. But I say, how many of you are saying, yep, yeah, I'm living for God's glory. I desire that God would be able to use me. And girls, we're going to mess up. We see it on softball. None of us is perfect. We make mistakes. Here's the key. Do you go out and be like, well, I don't care. I just made an error. But who cares if I do it again? That's just how I am, coach. But a lot of people do that to God. No, this is just how I am. No. God says, I died to set you free. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. And he says, I died so that you, when you're tempted, you'd be able to stand up against it. That I will always make a way out. That, girls, I have plans that are better for you than you can even imagine. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people who lie and act like, oh, you get riches and you get God says, actually, if you want to be on my team, you're going to have struggles. People aren't going to like you. You're going to go against the flow. And girls, we are finally seeing that in America big time. Maybe not as much in South Carolina, but I live in California. It's not popular a lot of times to stand upon the word of God and the truth that he says. But I will tell you, one day, every single person on this earth, every single person will stand before the living, almighty, creator God, and he says that every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So whether we say it now, or whether we say it when it's too late, it will be done and it will be said. So I encourage you, Ashley's with Jesus right now. We are playing in her memory, but it is a good reminder. What it reminds me of is that I might not be here tomorrow. I might not be here tomorrow, and if I am not, what did I leave behind? Because girls, the softball stuff, the numbers, as fun as it is, it's awesome to know that you played with all you had. And then someone can say, that girl on our team, she stood for Jesus. That's eternal because you get to see them again one day. So I encourage you to make sure you're on his team. The Bible says, he who is not for me is against me. But the Bible also says, greater is he who is in me, which is the Holy Spirit, God in us, than he who is in this world. There are plans for every one of us. Do not miss out on his plan for you. And part of that is saying, all right, coach, where do you want me to go? I'm in. I'll work on it. It might be uncomfortable. You're working on my swing, but I don't think this is going to work, coach, and it doesn't feel right. Don't worry. Keep practicing. I promise if you continue, it will work out the way I'm wanting to work out for you. 
If you will go down that path, what I learned a long time ago, even as an Olympic gold medalist, as I was winning these gold medals, and before my last Olympics, I was married and I wanted to have a baby, and I was like, Lord, I still have a passion to play, but I also want to be a mom more than anything. And I remember that night, I said, God, whatever your will is, I want your will above mine. Always above mine. Jesus did that when he sat hung on that cross for all of us. And girls, there were two thieves on the side of Jesus on that cross that hung. And they both had the choice to make. That's all of us. When I was reading that story, a lot of times we'll hear it on Good Friday when Jesus hung and, and died. But there's two. There were two. And here's the difference. We're all guilty. We all deserve the punishment. But then Jesus says, all right, I'll remember you. He tells that thief who finally recognizes, I, I messed up. And he says, all right, I'll remember you in paradise. So I pray that each of you would go into your heart and say, God, am I on your team? Am I on your team? And all that means, girls, is saying, I want to follow you. I give up my way. I surrender all. I know I cannot work my way to heaven because my good works could never get me there. Only what Jesus did on the cross for my sins, only the blood that was shed for me. There's these verses I think of when I think of all of us coming to the end. Okay? And it's in it's in 2 Timothy. And it was the Apostle Paul. And he said, in, in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, he says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Girls, I got three gold medals placed around my neck, and it was pretty, pretty awesome. But as great as it was to represent the United States of America, it was completely a bigger deal for me to be on that field next to my teammates, for them to know that I stood for Jesus. For them to know that I was praying for them, that I loved them, that even if they had their views, that I would pray that one day they would turn to him that I would be an example and encourage all of them. And what that looks like is eventually we realize it's not about us, but it's all about others. It's about being that teammate when your teammate, teammate gets on that you're thinking, okay, how am I gonna get them home? That's bigger, that's bigger at the end of the day. And you know, we're all girls. Sometimes we can be like, you know, like she didn't be mad, or we can like talk about people. God's saying, I died for that stuff. Just let that go. Honor me above all else. Make a difference because tomorrow you might not be here. And the last thing we want is that we would leave memories that are not about him. And he's bigger than all that and he forgives us, like I said. But no, only one team wins in the end. And it's those who have chosen Jesus Christ and what he did for them. And that's it. That's where the victory lies. That's eternity. And that's the people I get to see Ashley again. Are the people who stand with Jesus, for Jesus, on his team. Okay? Let's just pray to close. And then if any of you guys want to come up and see the medals and take pictures and, you know, whatever, we can, we can chat then. Or if you have any questions about the Olympics or Jenny Finch, because I'm sure a lot of you know who she is. She's my good friend. So, all right, let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for this time. I pray for everyone here. I love that you're a personal God, and that anytime we share the truth, Lord God, or the, the Bible gets read or talked about or open, God, that it is living and it, and it, it speaks to us. And so I pray, Lord, that they would realize this is not of me, this is completely of you. I don't get honored, Lord, you do. And so I pray for everyone here that they would recognize how quickly life can be gone. And that wouldn't bring a spirit of fear, but like your word says, it would bring a spirit of power and of love and sound mind, and that they would be filled with, Lord God, just this fire and this passion, bigger than the field that they play on. But Lord, ultimately for you, that you would work out your plan, you would fulfill it that you have for every one of them, and that they would be coachable. They would be moldable. They would be willing to do whatever it takes, Lord God, to stand firm upon who you say they are. And Lord God, that every one of them would know how much you love them. And so we just give this time up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.